Hello there, lovely people. It's Alex from Nintendo Life here, and today we're reviewing for you Pokemon Sword and Shield The Isle of Armor DLC for the Nintendo Switch. This review was originally written by me, so I've got no one else to thank. Isn't that lovely? But anyway, that's more than enough waffling. Let's dive right into things. <laughs> Whenever a series attempts DLC for the first time, you're sure to find a select few individuals pining for the olden days when you used to get our whole game in a single package. Conveniently forgetting the fact that Street Fighter 2 had no less than seven different iterations. But if a game sells well and there's hunger enough for more of the same, DLC definitely has its place. Coincidentally, this is the first time a mainline Pokemon game has attempted to slap on a fresh coat of content, so does it cut the mustard? That's a little joke about one of the characters in the game. The Isle of Armor starts off fairly simply. As soon as you've paid for and downloaded the update required to play it, you'll be told that a new destination has opened, allowing you to jet off to the titular isle via rail and then trained bird. You'll bump into your rival for this adventure as well, who will be either Clara, the poison type trainer, or Avery, the psychic type trainer, who with a name like that really should have been a flying type. And which rival you get depends entirely on whether you're playing sword or shield. It's sword for Clara, shield for Avery. Let's get this out of the way really, really quickly. Although it's something of no major consequence, we found both of these rival characters to be really irritating. A lot of their dialogue is self-narrative written in what can only be described as a ludicrously hammy fashion. They'll taunt you, belittle you, constantly use puns based around their respective typing choice, and yet still exclaim bewilderment when you beat them despite them only having three bloody Pokemon. After arriving on the aisle, you'll be tasked with heading over to the dojo, where you'll meet the rest of the cast of characters that are, thankfully, much less insufferable. Mustard, the dojo master, is a kindly old man with some quirky puns of his own, but his attempts are actually endearing compared to the other two that I previously mentioned. Pleased as cheese may not be a pun, but it's good. His wife, Honey, <laughs> Honey and Mustard, Honey and Mustard, is also a nicely written character who's homely, understanding, and only wants the best for everyone. Simple characters with distinct personalities are much, much more enjoyable in our book. These are the dudes and dudette, or dudettes and do, delete is applicable depending on which version of the game you're playing who will make up the structure of the story side of this DLC package. You'll start off by having to run about after three exceptionally fast Slowpoke, who have stolen a uniform and are now belting around the aisle at Mach 20. The weaving and avoiding other Pokémon whilst trying to keep up with these genuinely tough-to-catch critters was a surprising breath of fresh air. It reminded us somewhat of chasing after the members of the Bombers' secret society of justice in The Legend of Zelda Majora's Mask, and it helped to break up what is so often usually a battle of on in Pokemon gameplay. It's by no means revolutionary, but it's fun, and that's what counts. You'll be sent off on other missions as well, all resulting in getting your mitts on Kubfu, the larval form of the new legendary Pokemon Urshifu. We have to say that we were a bit taken aback how quickly this questline was over, beating it in what was really only a couple of hours. Admittedly, that was without exploring much of the island or stopping to catch any of the newly returning Pokemon that can be found, but even so, this DLC isn't heavy on the narrative, to say the least. What it does offer is enjoyable though, and we never felt that it dragged at any point. So the real meat and potatoes of this affair is the Isle itself, which is supposedly based on the Isle of Man. I don't see it. This is often touted by people as a new wild area, and whilst it's certainly not inaccurate to call it such, we feel that doesn't really do the environment justice to just leave it at that alone. What we have here, in contrast to the wild area's vast open landscapes, is a series of concentrated tailored biomes that feel much more intricate and carefully planned. You've got a desert, somehow, various caves, expansive oceans filled with terrifyingly fast Sharpedo, a properly sized whale lord, 
and even wetlands which put a particularly broad smile on our soggy British faces. Dens are in endless supply for any Max Raid battle fans, and overall, there's just much more to explore as well. Nooks and crannies are plentiful, hiding all sorts of delicious items and nameless NPCs with useful talents. It also feels bigger than the wild area overall, although in terms of actual meterage, we can't absolutely be certain of that fact. One of the unsung heroes in this expansion is the Alolan Diglett minigame. After finding one just before a bridge, you'll be able to find an additional 150 Alolan Diglett buried in and around the aisle, waiting to be found. They're fairly well hidden in some instances, and you'd be forgiven for running or riding over the top of some of them, as they offer no collision to give you any kind of clue. By no means is this going to set the world on fire, but the process of fulfilling this task is quick and surprisingly rewarding. Finding certain numbers of Diglett will net you Alolan forms of Pokemon that you might not otherwise be able to attain, and for free! It's a properly fun and challenging way to give you access to these classic Pokemon, and without just handing them to you, and is something that you definitely, definitely shouldn't overlook. There's also new outfits, hairstyles, bike customizations, and even the ability to have a Pokemon from your party follow you around, as made famous in Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. This latter feature does absolutely nothing from a mechanical point of view, but it's very pleasing regardless, although it sadly does only work on the Isle of Armor itself and not the rest of the Galar region for whatever reason. And before you leave a comment, if you haven't already, Yes, you can do this with Whale Lord. On the technical side of things, we're faced with a similarly mixed bag to that of the base game. Low resolution textures are common throughout the landscape, and frame rate issues continue to be noticeable when biking around populated areas. Overall, it does look prettier than the basic wild area, if only for its more interesting geometry, but it's clear the visual limitations present before still have not been overcome. This is only overworld stuff though, Pokemon battles still look just as good as they did before, and you know, they've got good textures and stuff. They're good, it's just the outsides a bit in this. The Isle of Armor is a lovely addition to the base Pokemon Sword and Shield games, bringing in far more new features to tickle hardcore fans than we initially expected. On the downside, it's a little shy on narrative-driven content and really is all about the Isle and its Pokemon inhabitants. Still, whilst we certainly would have liked to have seen more story-driven gameplay, what's on offer here is still good stuff and offers dedicated fans of the series an awful lot to do and explore. If you love the wild area in Sword and Shield and you want more more of that, we can safely say that you'll get a kick out of this one. One of the unsung heroes in this expansion is the Alolan Diglett minigame. After finding one just before a bridge, you'll be able- <laughs>